Hello and welcome to the new video about the gamma function. In this video we will talk about the value of one half. Okay? We want to find the value of the gamma function for the number s equals one half. And actually this integral is very important in physics and you will see why. Okay, so just let us start. Our starting point is just the functional equation, the new functional equation that we found out for the gamma function in the previous video. We found out that gamma of s multiplied with gamma of 1 minus s is equal to pi over sinus of pi s. Okay? Now what we do is, as we search the value of s equals 1 half, we just plug it in. Okay, we plug in gamma of 1 half, gamma of 1 minus 1 half, is equal to pi over sinus pi half. Now let's see what will happen is here this 1 minus 1 half will give you 1 half again and gamma of 1 half multiplied with gamma of 1 half give you, gives you gamma squared 1 half. Okay, on the right hand side let's see what that body is doing. Sinus pi half will just give you 1. So on the right hand side we have pi. Now this is an easy equation. We have gamma of 1 half squared is equal to pi. What do we do? We just take the square root. Okay. Now we know that the value of the gamma function uh, for s equals 1 half is equal to square root of pi. Okay. I hope you cannot imagine what that means <laughs> and that's the reason why I will show you what this actually means because I couldn't imagine myself what does this mean gamma of 1 half equals uh, square root of pi so just let's have a look what does this mean we will use the definition of the gamma function uh, which says gamma of 1 half is equal to from the integral from 0 to infinity for t normally we had here an s now this is 1 half minus 1 which will give you a minus 1 half which will be equal to 1 over the square root of t multiplied with e to the minus t dt. Well, that is something that we could imagine. Okay, We know that this integral, or the strange looking integral, 1 over square root of t multiplied with e to the minus t from 0 to infinity will give you a value of square root of pi. But that is not actually what is important for us. We will do a little substitution here. Okay, this is what we found out. Now, what we will do is we will do a nice little cool substitution. We will say that t is equal to p, which is just a constant number, but being positive. Okay, it's very important that it is positive. Now, we just want to sub dt. What we do is we just implicitly differentiate that. We get dt is equal to t uh, 2 p u d u. Actually, what you could do is um, just go ahead and differentiate this side by t, knowing that this is a function of t, and you will, would end up here. Okay. Now, this is what we have to plug in. For dt, we will plug this in, 2 times p u d u. And here we have to plug in p u squared, and also here in the exp uh, exponent here. So this is what we get. Here, 1 over the square root p u squared 2 p u and here this minus um, p u squared okay now what we will do what we can see is actually this 2 we can take this out of the integral it's a constant number and we have here square root of p here p so we will get a total of uh, square root of p so we can take that out too here in the denominator we have square root of u squared Actually, this would be able uh, would be equal to the absolute value of u, but we know our u values are greater than zero. Okay, uh, you might ask why did the boundaries not change? Because it doesn't zero is still zero and infinity is still infinity. Okay, so what we get here is two square root of p from zero to infinity e to the minus p u squared du. Okay. This has to be equal to pi because this is a constant number. We just uh, used other variables to express that. Now I'm doing another trick because this integral is an even integral. You can write the double of it as the integral from mi minus infinity to infinity e to the minus pu squared u. And this is what we do in the last step. So we take this 
to into this integral, making it from minus uh, go letting it let in it go from minus infinity to infinity, and we divide with square root of p. And you see, this is the reason why I said that the p had to be positive. Okay, we, we are taking the square root of this, and this is the integral that is very important in physics. Is this uh, Actually, this is the Gauss integral. It's sometimes called Gauss integral, even if this formula was known by Euler uh, hundreds of years uh, before him. Not hundreds of years, but he knew it before Gauss. But it's a very important thing because this integral is part of the normal distribution. Okay, so just a hint, so you know why it's called Gauss integral. And actually, that's it for this video. I hope you had a little bit of fun with that, and I hope you subscribe to see my new videos coming up soon, okay? So, see you guys.